we left off facing both sides, the narrower sides of the jaw. Now we should have a final dimension of 1.5 in this direction, and these should be cleanly faced off with the fly cutter. We're going to move on and look at this face and this face to complete our jaws. We'll also have to cut our whole material out since our stock is a little bit larger. In the last setup, we'll just double check our stock, but we used a fixed size box. We're still at a width of six. Our depth is one and our height was 1.6. We took off that one that point one in order to get to 1.5. So again, as we inspect, we want our final dimension to be 1.5. So I'm gonna create a new setup. And for my stock, I'll use a fixed size box again. And my stock is six inches wide. My depth now is 1.5. My height is 1.06, I believe. And for my setup, I'm not gonna use model orientation. I'm gonna select, and for my z-axis, I am going to select this right here. I'll flip my z-axis, and now when I go back to my stock, I can see that it fits nicely within our part here. I'm going to hit OK and just to double check, make sure that our setups match. My, my depth here was, was one, my actual is a little over one. So I'll go back, edit this setup. And I'm going to offset from the bottom and I'm going to offset 0.2. And this will allow me just to face this side, do my pockets, and then when I flip over, I'll take off the majority of the material here. And I know that I need to take off 0.2 off the bottom. Right now, this gives me a lot of work holding. So I can also edge the part of the material uh, pretty deep, about 3 quarters of an inch or so. So I like this setup. But what I'm going to do here is select my box point. And I'm going to select this point on the stock. And that's going to enable me to uh, find all of the edges and then find my depth. I'll hit OK. My first step is going to be to face this. So I'm going to create a 2D face. And I already have the Superfly selected. I'm not gonna select anything for my stock contours. For the heights, I'm gonna cut all the way down to the face of the material. So I wanna to go to model top. For my passes, I'm gonna climb cut. I want to do a pass extension of 1.75 to completely clear the part. The fly cutter is about three inches in diameter, so I'll clear this whole part in one pass. For multiple depths, I'm gonna leave this pretty fine so I get a good finish, and I know I'm not taking off a lot. So I'm gonna do 0.02. As for linking, I wanna make sure that I extend before retract so the fly cutter leaves the part completely. I'm gonna hit okay. And I can see I'm going to make three light passes over the top of the material. 
my next step is to spot drill these holes. So I'm going to go to drilling operation. I'm going to select and in our class library, I'm going to use the center drill and I'll hit OK. As for geometry, it's asking for hole faces. I can select this hole and then select same diameter. So both of those get hit. I don't want it to go to the whole bottom. I want to go to model top and where it says drill through bottom or the offset. I can look at my tool geometry and determine what that offset is here. So if I look at my tool and edit my tool, this distance here is 0.1875. So if I make sure that I drill at least past this chamfer, I should be able to get a nice center hole. So I'm going to just drill in 0.1, which is a little more than half that whole tip. I'll hit OK. So model tap and where it says drill tip through bottom. We'll try that and then we'll see how far it goes. And here we have a couple options, but we're just going to drill and wrap it out. I'll hit OK. And now if I pull my part to the side, I can see my tool goes pretty deep. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit. So I'll edit this tool as far as my heights go. I'll uncheck and for my offset, I'm going to put negative 0.1. And I think that's even a little too deep. So let's try negative 0.05 just to get the tip in. Now I hit OK. And that just ensures that I have a good starting point for my drill bit. All right, I'm going to add another drilling operation. I can do it this way, or I can hit my create derived operation drill, and that'll stay the same. And for my geometries, I'm gonna deselect these faces, and I'm gonna select these bottom faces here. And that way I can go through the whole part. For my heights, I'm going to select whole bottom. And I will select drill through and no offset. I'm going to do drilling, wrap it out, and change that to deep drilling, full retract. I want to make sure I clear all those chips. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm using a quarter inch drill so that I can put my quarter inch end mill into those pockets and completely mill them out. So at this point, let's check our simulation and make sure that our operations look good. So first I'm going to be facing and then I'm going to be and clean. That should be a smooth finish since we're only taking off 0.02. There's our spot drill. And this is good, we did the simulation. If I look at my drilling operation, I forgot to change the tool. So here I'm going to go back to my library and I want the quarter inch tool. And I'll hit OK. And I'm just going to simulate that one. So 
So since I've selected that bottom here, it's trying to find the whole top. And for my heights tab, I want to select the model top. And now I have a full cut. So be careful when you select different holes. Our next step is to create a 2D adaptive clearing. The tool we're going to use is the quarter inch end mill tool 31. And we're going to clear out both of these holes. For my geometry, I'm going to select the bottom of each of these. As for my heights, I want to start with the selected contours and I'm going to go to my model top. I don't completely care about the finish inside here. This is a functional part, so I'm not going to leave any stock. Um, I'm just going to do a finishing pass within this operation. So for multiple depths, I'm going to be taking away 0.05 per cut. Be gentle on the tool. I'm climb cutting. And my optimal load, I'm going to lower this just a little bit so that I get a cleaner cut and I'm not taking out so much material. I'm going to be bringing my tool into this part very quickly. Here it's asking order by depth or by area. I'm going to choose by area so it stays in this pocket and then comes back to this pocket. As for my linking, I'm going to do stay down level most. This will take a little longer to calculate, but it'll speed things up. For my ramp, I need to make sure that I do a plunge operation or a, or a pre-drill, either or. I'm going to choose uh, pre-drill, and for my pre-drill position, it's asking me where I want that, and I'm going to choose this top circle and this top circle. So I have two pre-drill positions, and I'm going to hit OK. Our tool clears out that entire pocket. If you wanted, you could bring the tool uh, a little bit below this part. So for my adaptive, I'll edit that. So for my heights, when I go to select a contour, I'm just going to put in a negative 0.01 and I'll hit OK. That way my tool goes just a little below my part and when I face off this back side, it'll be clear. My last step is to cut out the outer shape of this material here. So I'm going to create an adaptive and I'm going to use the shear hog to clear out this part. Okay, so this carbide should clear this part pretty quickly. And for geometry, we'll select this bottom edge here. And for our heights where it says selected contour, we need to figure out how far we want to go down. But we know there's 0.2 on the bottom. And depending on how much we're holding in the vise, that leaves us with 0.8 to take off. So I'm going to be pretty safe with this and do 0.6 to go over half the part. And that way I know if I do Another 0.6 clearing, I definitely cleared the part and I'll never hit the vise. I've got over a quarter inch of holding in the vise. As for my top height, I need to make sure it's model top. I've already faced everything off. For my passes, I'm not going to leave any stock. Again, I'm mostly concerned about this face in the jaw. For multiple depths though, I am going to be relatively conservative. This has a half inch cutter on it, so I'm going to 
take off just 0 0.1 per pass. Uh, let's do 0.05. And for my optimal load, I'm going to bring that down as well to 0.1. Make sure it's climb cutting. And for our linking tab, We'll do full retraction, so if we need to go over the part, we will. For my stay down level, again, I'm going to choose most. It'll take a while to calculate, but it'll be nice to cut. I'm going to helix in just to make sure we don't completely engage the cutter. And I'll hit OK, and let's see what we get. We're only going to be doing, looks like, two passes to go down are 0.6, which doesn't seem right. I want to go past half the material, so let's go again to our, our height tab. And I'm 0.6 uh, above that selected contour, so, so I'll be the reverse, 0.4 above my selected contour. And let's let it recalculate. And that looks much better. Now I'm a little over half my part. That should complete the top side of my jaw. If you'd rather do your contour or adaptive clearing first, you're welcome to do so and then face off the top of the material and drill your holes to make sure that front edge is complete. You can always drag your adaptive above the face then edit your path and just make sure when you go to your heights tab that the top height now becomes the stock top because you haven't faced that yet. So I'll take a while to calculate, but now we've done the outside of the part, then we can face it off. I'm going to do one more setup. We'll create a new setup. We need to change our orientation, so let's select our Z-plane. For the stock, it's going to be a fixed size box. The width we know is actually 6. We'll keep it at the original stock because we haven't taken it all off. Our depth in the Y is going to be 1.5 because we've cut that. And our Z is now our model is 0.75, so 0.75 plus the 0.2 we left over brings us to 0.95. We're going to put our model on the bottom and offset that zero. So now we're going to face off this operation here. This all looks good. I want to also, I'm going to put my stock box point in this corner of the leftover stock. And I'll hit OK. Now, it doesn't matter because we've drilled the holes already, but just to make sure everything lines up, we can go back to this setup and see, is this mirrored? So if we go from this setup to this setup, it is. So just make sure that when you flip it, you can see the axis change. So my X and Y changed and mirrored, but my Z flipped over. I'm going to clear a bunch of material and I'm going to use the shear hog to do a portion of this. I'm going to clear away stock contours. Now I am going to leave some stock to finish this off with the superfly. So for my model tap, I'm just going to leave 0.05. For my passes tab, just to make sure I clear the part, I'm going to add 0.375 stock offset around the whole part. And that ensures half the bit will move around the part. I'll climb cut, and I'll do multiple depths. Again, I chose 0.05 before. That should be fine. And I could leave stock, but I'm just going to do that in the Heights tab. And 
I'm not super worried about extending before retracting. I'm just taking off a whole bunch of material on the top. Then I'll come by, clear away the part, and then do a finishing pass. So I'll hit OK. That should clear away the majority of the part and leave that 0.05. At this point, I'll do my adaptive clearing. I'm going to keep the shear hog. For my stock contours, I'm just going to select this outside here. I could select the bottom as well, and then it just depends on where we offset the part. So I'm going to select the top because I know how far I need to go. I left 0.4 from this face here. So for my heights, my top height is actually going to be model top, and it's 0.05 above that. And then for my selected contours, I selected the top, so now I'll do my negative 0.4. As for my passes, I'm going to keep that optimal load down. I'm not going to leave any stock. I will do multiple depths. Again, I'll do this at 0.05, and I'll order by area, climb cutting, my linking, change the stay down level to most, and I'll hit OK. That should clear down to the rest of the, the part that we didn't finish before. If you'd like to, you can move in your Heights tab even further, just to make sure that you cover and overlap your previous cut and see how they match up. All right, now I can see I went a little bit further. Just make sure it doesn't hit your vice jaws depending on how you put your part in. Our last step is to do our facing operation. And I'm gonna use the Superfly And I can leave stack contours, it's totally fine. And I do want to go down to my model top, but I'm going to select model top again. And my offset was 0.05. That way I'm not cutting air before my part. For my passes, I'll do climb. And multiple depths. We'll do, we'll do two cuts, 0.025. And that should be all right. Again, I'm going to change that pass extension to 1.75 to make sure I clear that part. For my linking, I'm going to extend before retract. I'll hit OK. And I should get two passes. Beautiful. That should clear my part. Make sure you save. And run your simulation to make sure everything works properly.